Yeah, good evening, Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, um, this video here, I just want to look at uh, the microphone amplifier and then some of the initial tests um, for transmit. So the radio has been uh, a few additions added to it, a bit of a reconfiguration. So we'll go through it in a sec, looking at uh, what it is. But here we have um, the uh, PTT switch. So uh, for this particular one, I'm going to use a very simple microphone, an electric microphone. Um, which doesn't have the PTT on the mic itself, so we'll have the PTT there. Um, below it is a 3.5mm socket, which will be where the, the Morse code key goes. On the right hand side here, um, this is the microphone, and then at the, um, the gain there for the mic, so that's the mic gain, um, 0 to 100%. So in terms of uh, where those signals are going, and like I say, we'll look at the actual mic amp in a sec. So um, if we just move this to one side, that there is our product detector on receive. Um, and in terms of that product detector there or that mixer, the IF output uh, on receive, of course, is the, the AF is going to this uh, switch over relay here. Um, in, a, in a past build, I had the output of that product detector, which goes to the audio amp directly in parallel with the mic coming in. Um, while there was some attenuation on the mic and some attenuation on the receive audio, it actually worked reasonably well. But for this particular uh, build, I decided to uh, keep things isolated, um, hence that switch over relay there. So the normally closed contacts, in other words, when the relay is de-energized, um, feeds that audio, so it's on receive that is, so it feeds the audio through there and across to the, um, the AF amplifier. On transmit, the contacts are closed, um, and then for, through this grey wire here coming from the mic amp, um, that feeds the transmit audio into that IEF port, which is then stepped up to our IEF frequency. Um, no other real change in terms of uh, the path. So, like I say, we're doing transmit checks now, so um, that bi-directional amplifier has now switched over to have the signal going in that direction towards the crystal filter. Um, and recall that was by this relay here. So this relay is switching either a ground or, um, uh, what was it? It's sitting on 6 volts in this, from this um, voltage regulator here to those bi-directional amplifiers there. Uh, no change there, so that transmit signal is now going through either um, uh, the CW filter or the SSB filter. Um, because this is microphone audio, it will go through the SSB filter there, out the other side into our second uh, IF amplifier, which is now on the upstream side of the, or the downstream side of the crystal filter. Uh, again, that one's now also switched over, so the signal is now running down into our final mixer where it's stepped up to our desired transmit frequency through the bandpass filter um, and then back through the antenna switching relay and uh, out the antenna. Uh, that antenna switching relay there has been added in and that's just uh, switching the antenna between the receive RF amplifier and uh, what will be eventually the, uh, the transmitter. At the moment there's just a yellow link there which just links it across but in that yellow link will be removed in due course uh, and in its place will go a, uh, a power amplifier. Uh, another relay over here, uh, which is just um, providing the transmit and receive uh, 12 volts. So 12 volts comes in, and depending if it's on receive or transmit, will then energize those two segments there, which feed off uh, the various parts of the circuit, be it a transmit circuit or a uh, receive circuit. Um, so yeah, not a real big change there, and um, so let's have a look at the, the, the actual amplifier itself, the, the mic amp. So, let so I can zoom out there. Um, that's a very simple Class A uh, amplifier using a 2N3904. Um, in this particular case I decided to use an electret microphone. So just starting with the electret, um, I don't have the spec sheet for this particular microphone, but if, uh, if you look online, they all seem to be pretty similar. In other words, the, the DC voltage that you want to put onto the plus side of that particular mic needs to be around 2 volts, 
and it talks about a, a maximum current typically um, of, of half milliamp. So having or knowing that up here is going to be 13.8 volts and down here on this side of that resistor which I'm just calling RM for Mike uh, is 2 volts then through Ohm's law we can work out what that value needs to be. So 13.8 minus our 2 volts divided by half a milliamp gives us 23 uh, K ohms. I'm going to go higher in resistance because I want to drop that voltage down just a little bit more so I don't exceed that half a milliamp. So I'm going to use a 27 K ohm resistor. So let's fix that one there. Now in terms of the actual biasing itself for the transistor, um, I'm going to let the ICQ, the quiescent DC current, through the device to be 10 milliamps. And then from the spec sheet, um, the uh, DC current gain, uh, the, the minimum is 100 and the maximum is 300. Now, we could just take the, the overall mean, so 300 plus 100 divided by 2 gives us 200. Or, in this particular case, I've elected to use the geometric mean. Um, and I, I do remember reading this somewhere, but I honestly can't find it again. And I must admit I didn't find too many references to it um, on the internet, but I, I do recall it. But if you were to do the geometric mean, then it would be um, 100 times 300, and then square root that, which comes out at 173. And noting how HFE, or the, the beta of a transistor, varies quite a bit. You know, the difference between 173 and 200 is, is here nor there. So, for the sake of this particular circuit, um, I'm going to run with this one with an overall uh, HFE of uh, 173. So, as we've seen in, in previous uh, videos, the, the emitter resistor there. So, we'll just make, again, the, uh, the voltage at the emitter a tenth VCC. So, a tenth times 13.8 divided by a quiescent current 10 milliamps gives us 138 so we'll just use uh, 150 ohms R2 so that voltage divided by us there normal story um, the voltage at the emitter plus 0.7 we want 10 times the, the uh, base current through there uh, and again just Ohm's law so uh, 1.38 the voltage at the emitter plus 0.7 divided by 10 times our quiescent base current, so again our emitter current which is close enough to our collector current so remember IC divided by beta or our HFE for DC gives us our IB or our base current um, it comes out to 3.6k roughly so we'll just use 3.9 R1, the, the upper resistor there um, VCC minus the voltage at the base, so again that 1.38 plus 0.7, and this time we need to include the additional 1 times um, the base current, so it'll be 11 times the base current through that one. Here goes our base current again, 10 milliamps divided by 173, comes out at 18432, so let's round that up to or down to uh, 18k ohms. Now, um, the actual coupling capacitors there, the input and the output. Um, I haven't bothered to determine what the input resistance is and then work out what the minus 3 dB point is for our lowest frequency of operation. Um, ideally, we want to be able to move through here 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz. That's sort of standard voice frequency range. So I'm just going to use um, uh, a value of um, 10 microfarads. But for the emitter resistor there, um, I'm going to, the emitter bypass there, uh, at the lowest frequency, make that equal a tenth of our emitter resistor. So a tenth of RE, which will give us, because we're using 150, 15 ohms at our lowest frequency, and we know that our capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi FC. Um, so therefore we can rearrange and solve for CE. So 1 over 2 pi, 300 hertz times 15 ohms equals 35 microfarads. Um, I simulated this circuit in LT uh, SPICE and then ultimately came up and decided to use a value of uh, 100 microfarads. Um, starting off with 35, but 100 microfarads just gave a little bit better performance, a little bit better lower frequency gain. Um, so that's why I decided to make that value. 
So our, our emitter, say again, our RC, our collector resistor. Um, going to try and make the voltage at the collector in the quiescent conditions roughly halfway between VCC and VE. I'm going to assume a VCE of zero, so the uh, the device flat out. So um, 0.5 uh, times 13.8 minus um, 1.38 volts. So that's uh, our voltage at the emitter equals 6.21. And then through Ohm's law, 6.21 volts, which is now across that collector resistor, divided by our 10 milliamps, comes out at 2, 621 ohms, or we'll use a 680 ohms. Um, now in terms of, uh, let's go back to the, the, main, the main circuit here. Um, what I decided to do, um, the actual, the, the, the mixer or the, 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 the um, balanced modulator that this voltage is driving you need very very little to to get that going so I was quite happy just to stick with quite a large resistor here in series with a 300 ohm which is what I had available in the junk box um, a 300 ohm pot to give me the the, um, the volume control which will ultimately turn out to be um, the gain control for the mic amp which will set then the output power um, so what I did is I set up in a test configuration, used my normal voice volume, and then found a value of R, that when this pot was at the highest position, in other words presenting the maximum amount of voltage to the um, balanced modulator, that I was getting 100% modulation. So I scoped the output of uh, the second IF amp, and then just looked for when I was getting to 100% uh, and not overdriving it. Uh, and that turned out to be 330k ohms. Um, and that's what we see sitting just there. So the output is coming out that orange wire through a, through a 330k ohm resistor and then into our 300 ohm um, pot there. So just looking down there, we can get, zoom up a little bit. Um, I don't know if you'll stay in focus. So that's just down there. So um, the input, the orange wire there, is the input from the uh, the microphone. Um, there goes our, uh, our resistor there, dropping down the 13 volts to provide that um, two volts to the microphone for its bias, and then the coupling capacitor uh, feeding into the amplifier itself. Um, what else? What else? What else? And then just a standard uh, 100 microfarads and um, 100 nanofarad decoupling across the VCC line. So, um, in terms of uh, how it worked out and sort of initial observations in the low power transmit, um, so what I've got up here, I've got the SIGGEN set up and it's uh, set up for an audio frequency, so 1.2k ohms here at the moment, um, and that's feeding a speaker which is buried. Um, in uh, under a couple of towels to try and keep the noise down. So I'm just going to put the, the microphone underneath that. Like so. And hopefully that's going to be relatively quiet. And then we can key it up. So we're in the transmit now. Um, which is just indicating there. There'll be some logic in there later on to determine if the mode's in CW or SSB and then do some other things. But at the moment we're keyed. And then up on our monitor up here, we can we can pick that coming up. So uh, that's basically um, coming out of the the bandpass filter and, and into a dummy load, and then this the receiver here is just enough to pick it up. So upper side band back down the lower side band, and then we can change here our frequency. So we're now down to 400 hertz. 200, 100, so ideally you want to be able to shift at least 300 hertz and then up to 1k, 2k, 2.6, 2.7 and just start to drop off there. So that would be a function of both the, the crystal filter clipping the upper frequencies and also this passband here. Uh, its crystal filter has only got a 2.7k um, bandwidth there as well but either way, uh, certainly getting through um, at this portion of the radio here, um, those frequencies, which is good. Um, so initial observations, uh, 
I am, even though these two mixes here, these two homebrew DBMs um, were matched as, as well as I possibly could, uh, I do have to acknowledge that they're never ever going to be as good as, if I can just pull one out of the box, um, as an SBL1. Um, if, if I recall, the, the diodes rings in here are, are certainly matched and may even be uh, potentially um, laser trimmed to be spot on. Um, I'm not quite sure that's the case, but certainly the, the, the matching of the diodes in that particular device will be significantly better than what I could achieve here. Um, as a consequence, there is a small amount of carrier um, feeding through, so the, the DBM should have, if, if all things being perfect, uh, only allowed that um, some indifference to pass through and the two uh, input frequencies, be it the audio or the um, the VFO here, or the BFO more the point, um, should have been nulled out. But there is a small amount of that coming through and as a consequence, uh, if I was to basically disconnect the, uh, the key, so it's still keyed, um, and up on the radio, if I was just to tune slightly higher in frequency, we can just hear a little bit of the carrier coming through there. So there's a small amount of carrier coming through. Um, and I guess the second observation would be that uh, in an ideal world, I would have thought that um, if the skirts were steep enough on the crystal filter, that um, that carrier leakage there um, wouldn't have got through. So I guess if my understanding is correct, we have our... Um, we have what would have ordinarily been a suppressed carrier, our lower sideband, and then sitting over top of that would have been um, the pass band of the filter. Um, but because I've got a situation here where I have, I'll just draw it this big for the sake of it, um, a small amount of carrier leaking through, and I suspect my skirts are not quite as steep as they should be, then I'm getting some of that carrier passing through uh, on the, the other side of the crystal filter. Um, so that may be something to look at uh, as an add-on to this radio, if I, if I feel like it after it's been fully built, would be to potentially look at maybe a, uh, a five or a six um, pole crystal here, filter, um, to steepen up those skirts uh, or Maybe, I don't know, potentially play around, but, uh, yeah. Again, these were very cheap crystals. Um, I suspect the Q is not that fantastic with those. Um, so, uh, you know, one could argue you get what you pay for, but um, not not too bad. What I did do last night is I, uh, I took this particular, uh, the balance modulator here out, and I played around with using the SBL1 in its place. Uh, Interesting enough, um, it did, it was better, not significantly better, but better. Um, but this one here also let, let through just a very small amount of carrier, um, which was interesting. Uh, I don't know, and, and, and I must admit, you know, a, a bit ignorant. I'm, I'm not sure if that's because I'm not using a diplexer after this, and potentially um, there was an impedance mismatch there. Uh, I don't think I'm too far off though because um, on the IF side, we'll say again, my apologies, on the RF side coming out, that um, that bi-directional amplifier is a 50 ohm input, so the 50 ohm should have been matched through this anyway. But suffice to say there was a very small amount of carrier also leaking through, and then as I'm, I'm suspecting, uh, the skirts on, the, on this filter here are not sharp enough to, to sit between that carrier and the intelligence which is 300 hertz away um, so I'd say, I'd say you know down 40 odd dB that's just sort of sneaking across um, across that carrier and allowing us a little bit to, to sneak through um, I don't know how much of an issue that's going to be once the full radio is built up um, and we do some on-air checks I suspect well there will be you know any, any carrier leaking through here um, is ultimately going to be amplified and, and go out so uh, it's certainly not going to get any better, uh, but in terms of reception, as we've seen up here, um, it's not impacting the ability to, to detect. It's still 
it's still okay. It's only if you go slightly above that you start to get into problems. Um, but anyway, more than happy to to teach, take suggestions or or comments or, or whatever. Um, but in the, the day, you know, crumbs. This is a uh, and I've and on purpose tried to keep it simple. Um, I'm trying to use readily available parts as opposed to you know some exotic. Well, not that these are ultimately exotic, but you know some more expensive parts like this, and sort of trying to keep things down. Um, and hence the choice here to use a uh, a very common electric microphone over a, um, a more expensive dynamic style. So I think that's probably all I wanted to cover uh, tonight. Um, uh, no, nothing else comes to mind. So like I say, you know, one option there is I uh, just continued through, built up the whole radio, and then I'm, I'm sort of quite keen to either move on to a different radio and use the um, the monolithic uh, IF amps and a, uh, a commercial crystal filter or potentially uh, rework some of the components in here to make it better. Uh, that may be an option, you know, rework the crystal filter. Um, maybe swap out the, uh, the, the DBMs here. I don't know. It's just, it's all about playing and learning and having fun. So um, I was never going to build a... Uh, a Flex 6000, whatever they're called, replacement, so um, it is what it is. Anyway, I'll say 73 is there, and uh, like I say, more than welcome to accept uh, constructive feedback, please, and uh, we'll continue playing around. But next steps, like I say, um, rather than sort of reworking some of this now, would be to, to take that link out, and then to put some thought into uh, what is going to be the... Um, the the uh, the power amplifier strip. Um, I'm still quite keen because I, I really haven't had much success, and I really do need to have a, a good think about it. Uh, is the IRF the IRF 510 with some kind of pre-driver on that, um, and then yeah, use that for both the SSB and the CW. Still looking to use uh, that clock one, um, that unused output clock. Uh, as the CW, so the key will come in through here. Um, the Arduino, the Arduino there will sense that that's being keyed. Um, probably I'm not quite sure if I'm going to use the PTT switch or not. Um, but anyway, suffice to say, on key down, uh, clock one will liven up, and then we'll take that output. Um, probably filter it to convert it back into a nice sine wave. Uh, and then feed that through the linear power amplifier, uh, and out we go. So uh, that's the current thinking. Anyway, like I say, I've been rambling way too long, so I'll uh, say 73 is here, and uh, start putting some thought into the next stage. Okay, cheers all.